Hello, this is Roland Jung again. This is part of my ePlan for Beginners video. I want to show you how we create one of these panel layouts in 3D when we start with nothing from scratch. But before we get there, let's talk a little bit about why I'm doing this. So nowadays, when we talk to most people and they talk about their issues and, and topics, very frequently we have these topics that come along the device tagging wire numbering cross-referencing the creation of the building material which represents most likely over 50 percent of their time is where they would like improvements of course the improvements would come from automatic device tag numbering wire numbering cross-referencing being handled reports being generated terminals and cables can be also generated and this is what we do with ePlan. Based on the data portal, the manufacturer's data, we create our electrical schematics. We can even create a 3D of the layout itself. And all this while we save on engineering time. Now we do this with one platform, one tool that does both electrical schematics and 3D. And in our own cloud, we actually share the data. We can do some redlining. So this is our first step to get you towards what I'm talking about. Now, of course, the benefits of the digital twin, the fact that we do it in 3D, is on one side, the 3D collision check. On the other side, we have detailed cut sheets. We have drilling information. Drilling information, by the way, that can be sent through our cloud e-managed tool, kind of a, a Dropbox if you want, you want. We can send it to our colleagues at Rittel at the application center, and they can pre-drill all the panels, backplates, doors, side of the panels before they actually ship it to you. So this is really cool. Now, the reason why is because in our 3D, all components actually have additional information, such as the drilling information that follows it like the shadow follows, you know, any kind of object. So it's kind of cool to use ePlan in this regards because the drilling is made a lot easier. Now, the last portion is the manufacturing of the panel itself. So the smart wiring concept, which is my step number three, um, before we talk talking about this, let's understand the fabrication of the panels, the different steps. There's a mechanical uh, assembly up front, and there is the wiring that is typically done at the rate of seven or eight minutes per wire. So when we look at this, we have to assemble the panel first, and only at that point in time, so most of the time, when half of the, the time is done, we can start the seven to eight minute per wire process, which at the end represents 49% of the whole fabrication time, which is quite a lot. So if we focus on this, let's rethink a little bit. Let's see, what if we would have the wire length already calculated? Because this is the reason why we have to wait for the assembly to be done to actually be able to cut the wire in the right wire length. So we have to also think about the routing, which is not always obvious and can actually uh, be, um, or, or could, can lead to errors uh, based on some interpretations from the different electricians. So if you want to avoid this, let's do it for them. Let's rethink the whole thing a little bit, okay? Let's fabricate the wires based on the length that we can provide to you. And of course, as the components come in, the panels get pre-drilled by the retail application center. We assemble the whole components, ducts, and rails into the panel. We can start do the wiring, and this time at the rate of one minute per wire. So if we do have the length, we could save up to six minutes per wire. We could save probably 33% on our delivery time because we did the fabrication up front. We can Actually, as the assembly is done, so as all the components are in and the assembly is done, we can count precisely one minute per wire after the mechanical assembly and the panel is ready for testing. So this is a little bit where I want to go. And to get there, of course, first I have to create the 3D. So how does that work? Number one, you have to decide on what panel you want. So here, I went and I checked in the Rital VX series and I was interested in the 600 by 1800 by 400 deep and the number is 8306 
So I'm going to insert here a panel. And of course, I'm inserting this inside my layout. And as again, I, I said, just a small reminder, 583. Let's see 583 what we find. And it's going to drill it down. And here we have the VX freestanding uh, enclosure. This is most likely, as you can see here, this was actually downloaded from our data portal. And I can only invite you to go and get it from the data portal uh, because it also comes with a list of accessories and everything. So it, it's, it's kind of, it's really powerful. So you don't have to do much, right? So you go and get that panel. If you want one, you can also in this uh, environment here, it's really wise. You can easily stick a second one next to it. It's basically just snapping right to the right point. You can even rotate it here and just snap it there. So have like a, an angle position, all kinds of different things you can do. In my case, I just want this one panel. Now, interesting, let me just close this project here to keep it a little bit simpler. You can see that up front, when I created the enclosure, I also associated it to the right location designation, which is actually a very, very good thing to do because then all the components are typically then the ones that will go on that particular enclosure. As you can see, we have the housing, we have some mounting panels, we have some doors. I'm actually going to work most likely on the mounting panel front. So I just find it here. This is my surface. We have some locked areas. I can't really place anything. And the first thing I typically do in my case is I place some wire ducts. Now, the wire ducts here, remember, you can go this. And I'm talking about the tree view. Sometimes it's easier to go because you have this nice arrangement by manufacturers. You can, uh, you know, find the perfect dock that is there. So I'm going to go with a uh, 80 millimeter, 60 millimeter uh, wide, 80 wide, 60 wide. So I'm going to use a fairly big one here. And I will just start from the very top, right? And then just move down. Now, you can hit the letter A when you have E plan Pro Panel because it will help you. And I'm not going to go really further down than the reserve area that is there. And then from that point on, I will stick. And you can see I have these snapping points turned on so I can auto snap to a certain element. And if you pull up, you can see it actually goes fine. Pull down, goes fine, goes over to the right hand side. My handle might not be perfect. So I'm going to hit the letter A and it will flip the handle from middle, left or right. And here I'm going to go with the exact length here. I want one there big ones at the very top boom again here the handle a will be a little bit different boom like this and from that point on i'm going to insert straight my din rails now of course what's also interesting is that the din rails that i picked here are actually uh prepared from the manufacturer with some manufacturing information which actually implies automatically that you have all your drilling information that comes with the tool. You can actually view this by hitting the view, drilling view, and you will see all these different holes that appear. These are actually the pre-drilled holes that Rital could actually prepare for you when you send this project to Rital. Now, I'm going to choose actually smaller docks, like a 30 millimeter dock here to place it. And I'm just going to go open hand and place it. Now, if I want to place it at a certain distance, when you pick the component, right, any given component that you pick here in this case, let's say a wire duct, again, picking the same wire duct, you will actually be able to hit the control W key. And you can say, OK, I want an offset of minus 12 inches which will basically reposition, as you can see, my cursor. So if I place my cursor dead center here on my previous DIN rail, it will be exact at minus 12 inches below. And then I can, of course, just go further over. Another thing that is interesting here is you can use the good old duplicate function and you can use the control key to actually find the center point of two given points, right? So here, if I want to duplicate at that particular distance, center to center, I could probably uh, put two of them and it would actually place two of these DIN rails 
right boom boom one below each other now this is how you place docs and then rails and of course you can copy and paste so if i control c and control v that also works and you can then decide i want this at a certain distance from control w let's say at six inches above so in this area here i want six inches in between if it's centered down below whatever boom and you just place it like this that easy now remember here in these different layouts there's a layout called a 3d mounting layout and this will englobe all the components all the devices that have a part number assigned in your schematics now i'm interested in only unplaced parts at the moment i haven't placed any parts so it's exactly the same same thing and here i'm going to focus on a1 i actually created myself an additional filter and i also assigned the a1 as my filter so i can actually check out what goes here so here the idea is of course to come and place these different items that you have from the schematics. I have a few relays. Relays I'm going to put actually on a second in rail. So it's just a matter of drag and drop, boom, 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 boom. And it places these components automatically. This is really a cool feature. And you can see they disappear because of my filter in the list. If I have something special like this, uh, G could actually fit, fits perfectly well here. This component here, I may not have necessarily the 3D object, then what it does, it actually creates just a space based on the X, Y, Z size of the component, which is good too to actually do the component. Another thing in this environment is here this beautiful way to actually rotate. So you can rotate very quickly by clicking any of the surface. So you want to see from the top, you want to see from the left hand side. You want to zoom in, zoom out. It's just a matter of you know, rolling in, rolling out. I recommend to all to have like a certain grid size here that actually fits, you know, the way that you work. In my case here, I have a grid right now that is being set. If you click here, it's uh, when I place anything, right? It's actually going to show you the, the grid. It's a one inch uh, grid in this particular case. So of course, this was a light that goes on the front and side. These are a few relays. So I'm just going to take this, this, Let's see what they are. These are actually PLCs, so I have to actually be a little bit more careful when I do place them. This K1 here is just a small control. I'm going to put it there. It's a temperature control. Probably temperature controls, you may want to place them at the top here, right? Uh, if you want to place some overloads, uh, any kind of overloads a series, you can also use This is an interesting thing here with the control key because you can pick the devices you wish to connect. So, of course, this one here is something I can place. These ones have to be placed on the relay. Interestingly, here, the overload one, which goes on CR1, I can actually drag and drop, and you will see something interesting in ePlan. When I drag and drop this one, this particular relay has a placing, a mounting point called OLR, uh, and this is specifically made for this overload to connect right in here. And this is really a cool feature because within ePlan, it now recognizes that CR1 is connected to L1. These are internal connections, etc. It's really a smart thing. It's, it's super, super nice. Of course, let's go back here. Let's take a look at a regular overload like this. The regular overload, you most likely would actually just drag and drop it here. Now, you can also drag and drop it and put it at exactly 12 inches if you want to from the left hand side which would basically then give you that same offset i was using before but just for placement of these objects very very nice in the placement now when it comes to terminal strips it's also really nice because it can actually handle a whole terminal strip at the same time all you have to do is answer yes i want the whole tv1 to be placed and bingo it just places the whole terminal strip boom right in one click now of course at the end of the day you have all your components placed but really interesting also is that ePlan is now capable if you have the routing feature to route the best route possible for those components so i'm not saying that all the components have been placed and all can be routed 
But this is really cool because now your wires have a specific length. And now if they do have a specific length, wow, this means I can give this out to someone and he could prefabricate this wire and it would actually also feed my smart wiring tool, which you will see in different videos that I created earlier. And this is how I create and place my panel layout. Now, of course, the panel layout uh, has the collision check at the same time. So when you place components here, I have no risk because I'm, I'm deep enough. And if you actually place some fans, let's see if I have a fan. I'm just going to type in here fan. So this is a component that I haven't placed yet on the um, on the uh, uh, schematics yet. But let's see how that works. If I place a fan right there. What it will do is it will actually require some specific drill holes and even a rectangle. Let's see how that reflects in terms of uh, paperwork. Because on, 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 on the typical uh, project, what I'm expecting here is to have for the manufacturing people various different reports that actually get generated. So remember in ePlan, we generate reports based on one single click here, generate project reports, and it will generate the reports relative to what you have drawn in your schematics and in your 3D layout. Here you can see them side by side. We have the schematics on one side that give us and provide us some information, and we have the 3D layout. All this in the same platform, in the same tool, you can either start with ePlan. Pro panel or have ePlan Electric P8 with Pro panel, and this can be done. The beauty about this is that the bill of material is a complete bill of material of all the components, including what you have on the mechanical side, ducts and rails, and it also can create a very distinguished bill of material for the kitting, which will give you all the components you have to pick up and all the components with a picture and even the detailed device tags, right? So further down, the next step, of course, I talked about was the um, uh, cutting sheets. The cut sheet is really nice because for each duct and rail, I have a detailed list here. So you can go and pre-cut all the ducts and the rails. According to this list, very simple. It's, it's kind of this Swedish company that actually helps us mount some components. Here, the same thing. I have actually two sheets for the drilling because remember that uh, fan that I placed required like a rectangle and four holes. Here you can see the details, you know, rectangle of a certain size, 92 by 92, and exactly where to position it. And last but not least is, of course, the um, detailed assembly for whatever you have to place there. We do it in a very simplified manner because this is to assemble the whole thing. And from that point on, you are ready to do the wiring once it's assembled. And if the wires were pre-cut and prepared up front, well, all you need is primarily somebody that goes and does the wiring. And for this, we have smart wiring. So I hope this small beginner's video helped you to actually create your first panel layout like this and to successfully generate all these different reports. This, these reports are obviously based on a perfect template, a perfect template you get with our team during your onboarding session, because they will, with you together, help you create the perfect environment here with the templates for all these different reports and all of these different views that we actually mentioned here, uh, view for the backplate, for the doors, for the ducts and the rails, etc. You can even have a nice title block here at the very front end that will live always show you the absolute latest and best graphic of your panel layout. So of course, as you add things in the layout, this will be updated, the bill of material will be updated, everything will always be up to date. And of course, you can have your wires prefabricated, which means you can be much, much more efficient on the manufacturing side. So I hope this video helped you again in this one particular portion, which is the creation of the panel layout in 3D. Thank you. This was Roland Young from ePlan Canada.